Now, on Monday, we discussed the notion of crime, or crime is. Now, an important lesson from that lecture is that crime, or notions of criminality, are socially constructed. So if notions are, of criminality are socially constructed, notions of deviance are necessarily socially constructed as well. In ancient Greece, it was quite normal for adolescents to engage in homosexual activity. So our notion of homosexual behavior coming out of the Greek period was something that was perfectly normal. So it wasn't just something that was acceptable. It wasn't just something that we tolerated. It wasn't something that we chose not to criminalize. But it was something that most people engaged in. In the US, post 18th century, sodomy is criminalized. Sodomy is a criminal act. And this criminal act is formally neutral, meaning it doesn't matter if it is between a homosexual couple or a heterosexual couple. But we see that as far as prosecutions go, the only people who were ever prosecuted, or for the most part, the only ones who were ever prosecuted, were homosexuals. In the UK, there were sodomy laws that prohibited, so we had criminalization of sodomy, but only between homosexual couples. So sodomy, the act, is lawful, but sodomy between homosexuals is prohibited. The original intent, if you look at it, was to eliminate non-procreative sex. So non-procreative intercourse. Now we study the UK because New Zealand inherited its laws on homosexuality, criminalization of homosexuality, from Britain. So in 1867, in New Zealand, sodomy was criminalized and it was prohibited or carried a sentence of 10 years to life. 1893, Parliament decided to increase the punishment and it became life with hard labor. In 1941, Parliament shifted again and it reduced the punishment to flogging and whipping. In 1961, Parliament shifted one more time and between 1961 and 1986, any homosexual indecency was punishable by five years in prison. Sodomy was punishable by seven years. And this is most interesting. Consensual sodomy between a male and a female was punishable by 14 years. In the UK and in New Zealand, it went via parliament. In the US, it came via the courts. Why the difference? Yes. Because they have a written constitution. Yes, because the Americans have a constitution. And any law that breaches the rights contained within the constitution can be invalidated by a court. Now we have private conduct between consenting adults, which is usually carried out in the privacy of their own homes. <coughs> so from a liberty perspective, the question is whether or not the state should be regulating <coughs> private conduct by individuals in the privacy of their own homes. Should the state have the right to regulate this behavior? In Britain, sodomy was prohibited between men. But heterosexual couples could engage in the behavior. So this was pointed to be a form of discrimination. The law is targeting specifically homosexuals. In the U.S., the discrimination argument rested not on the nature of the law, but the nature of prosecutions. Now, in England, reform began in the 1950s. And they said, at the end of the day, the behavior they're engaged in is not, in fact, harming anyone. The government concluded that the state should not intrude on the acts, the behaviors of consenting adults so long as those are carried out in private. What are some of the flaws? The state is already in our bedrooms. The state already regulates quite a bit of our activities. It doesn't really matter where the behavior takes place. It's the behavior that is being regulated. <coughs> Notion of consent. 
consent is very complex. Why do they take a simplified approach towards the decriminalization of sodomy? You have to think the timelines here, right? Historically, where we were. So this is, we're talking the 1950s. 1950s are post what? Second World War. And what was one of the things that democracies were doing battle against? Having states dictate how people must live their lives. So we're moving more towards notions of liberty. So the push in the post-World War II period was for greater liberty, greater freedom. And this had an impact on our attitudes towards homosexuality. And ultimately, it was decriminalized. Sodomy was decriminalized in the UK. In New Zealand, the decriminalization of homosexuality, homosexual behavior, or sodomy, was very controversial. Really interesting to see the language, the very moralistic language that is being used by parliamentarians to justify the maintenance of criminalization of sodomy. John Banks, to pretend that such behavior is normal or healthy is no more sensible than to celebrate with an alcoholic his drinking problem. The point is that when you're trying to understand the law, when you're trying to understand what is criminal and what is not, what is motivating lawmakers, what is motivating legislators varies. And some will draw upon a particular moral code, following which theoretical perspective? Natural law. And others will simply say what is right and what is wrong. What the court, or sorry, what parliament says is law is law. So in the U.S. we have a case, the Bowers v. Hardwick case. Hardwick decides that he's going to bring a case before the court and challenging the sodomy law. And the Supreme Court, in a 5-4 to four decision, rules that the law is constitutional. The law is constitutional. What the court says, at least what five justices say, is that there is no fundamental right to engage in homosexual conduct. There is an inherent weakness in the Bowers decision. And the weakness is that the question was not whether or not there's a fundamental right to engage in sodomy. The question is whether our right to privacy prevented the government from regulating behavior between consenting adults in the privacy of their own homes. Fast forward a couple of decades, and we have Lawrence v. Texas. When it went to the Supreme Court, it was presented explicitly as a privacy and liberty challenge to the sodomy laws, to Texas' <coughs> sodomy laws. This was the question that was posed. Does the Constitution limit the state's ability to regulate private sexual conduct between consenting adults? We're referring to consenting adults. And the Supreme Court held that the Constitution does prohibit that form of regulation in a 6-3 to three majority decision. And the consequence of that was the invalidation of all the American Constitute sodomy laws. How we framed the question changed the outcome. So always remember, the person who asks the question is halfway towards answering it. Now I think what's most important for you to think about in part D is what I have here up on the board. The contrast between liberty and order. What you have is a sliding scale. And the scale that you're moving between is order and liberty. Ultimate liberty, on one hand, means nobody can regulate anything you do. And what's that a recipe for in the kind of society we live in? I like to use the word chaos. But then we also have to be careful that we don't establish a situation where we have ultimate order. And so what we're always doing is trying to find a balance between the two. 